So as you mentioned, I'm, I'm Tyler Richards. I spend a lot of time building Streamlit apps. I came here from the Streamlit acquisition. Um, and I, uh, I started with Streamlit back in 2019 when I used to work at Meta. And I needed a way to help my team at Meta make a budget. So I was working on integrity problems. And the, there was a big question of like, all right, well, how many labels do we need? How many false positive um, related labels do we need? How many false negative um, labels do we need? What is going to be their confidence intervals? And it was really hard to explain to a lot of different execs how each little decision changed our budget. And so I needed a way to be able to show off the assumptions, allow people to change those assumptions, and then, um, and then see like, the, the, the resulting budget changes. Uh, the problem was I didn't know anything about JavaScript, HTML, or CSS, uh, and I wasn't a very good developer. So um, I ended up uh, finding Streamlit in a language, which is Python, that I knew extremely well. And I made an app in like an hour that just allowed people to move around some sliders and say, oh, do you want to look at this metric every week? What about every year? Um, and then how much would it actually cost? Uh, and so I literally brought it down around to meetings and handed people my laptop. And I was like, here, mess around with this and see, like, get a good understanding of how this stuff works. Um, I didn't know how to do any deployment because I, I didn't even know how to pronounce Kubernetes. Still not even totally confident I'm pronouncing it right now. But I had no clue how to actually do any deployment to get it into other people's hands. So then I found the team that was working on Streamlit apps and, and deploying them, and I really never looked back. So um, uh, we have been able to make uh, uh, this product that is called Streamlit in Snowflake. So uh, inside of your Snowflake account, you can go ahead and um, deploy um, you know, create, build, and deploy Streamlit apps. It uses your same role-based access controls um, as, as you're used to, um, and it's all operating within your Snowflake environment. A lot of different teams make tons of different apps with Streamlit and Snowflake, and I've had the privilege of talking to lots of different customers, as well as people internally, about workflow monitoring apps, and LLM integration apps, and business intelligence apps, and CRUD operations app, and uh, things that I would have never thought would have been uh, possible in Streamlit, I see each and every day. Um, and I also see my fair share of uh, not great apps. <laughs> and so I, and I've made a ton of apps that are like not very good either. And so I'm really coming to you guys to give you a little, a really short demo on, some, on an app that I made uh, last week in the course of an afternoon. And in that demo, I'm going to uh, share with you some of the lessons that, that I've learned over the years. So we're going to hopefully save you all uh, some, some time and effort. So I'm going to tell you the three things up front, um, and then we're going to go, uh, go through each, each one of them. The first of which is do not convert pixel by pixel. And what I usually mean by this is if you're taking uh, you know, some functionality from a dashboard or something that, that exists in another environment, um, don't just say, I want to recreate that exact thing in Streamlit. The second is that an ounce of data engineering is worth a pound of data science. And then the third is code with AI. So that took two minutes. I'm going to take the rest of the time, hopefully, live coding, uh, live coding some stuff for you. So let me, let me start this out. And while this is loading, I'm going to give you all some background. So, um, on the product data science team, which is the, the team that I work on inside of Snowflake, uh, we have this uh, idea called Snippets. It's very popular. A lot of you will probably do Snippets, uh, do snippets today. And Snippets is just a way of, of telling your entire team, what are three things that I worked on last week? What are three things that I'm going to work on this week? Um, and the way that we did it on our team as of like a month ago was uh, the, the head of data science, this guy named Rehan, he would uh, email everyone and he would say, put your snippets here. And then everyone would just reply all and write their snippets. Um, and then so you would get a bunch of emails over the course of Monday. And uh, then you would be able to see what everyone is working on. And I thought one afternoon, I was like, well, I feel like we could probably make an app that does that for you, that stores it in a nice way. And then maybe we can do some analytics on top of what people on our team are working on. I didn't want to make this big old project. I was like, let's just make this little app that might work for our team. So what I went is I, I went in, I'm going to see, how does this look? Yeah, looks reasonable. So I, I went into Streamlit, and I said, well, the first thing I need to do is I need to have an input. So I'm going to say my snippets equals sc.text area or something. And I'm going to say, like, you know, enter your snippets here. And then I'm going to go ahead and maybe just write them out. So I'll do, like, sc.write my snippets. And then whenever I enter in a snippets section here, it'll throw it onto my screen. Well. That, that works for being able to show it, but I need to toss it into my actual database. So I need to be able to have people not just write it into the app, but submit it somewhere. So I made um, this little function that, and the reason why, uh, 
I didn't live code this part is because I hate writing merge SQL, <laughs> and I don't do inserts a whole lot. So I wrote this to make sure I didn't screw anything up. But it's a really easy uh, SQL statement that just says, take the input, shove it into this table that I made. Um, and this table is something that I just created that has, hey, what, what is the, the first day of the week, you know, the first Monday um, for, for snippets? What is the person's username? What is the text of the snippets? When did, when was, and when was this recorded? So in my Streamlit app, I can say maybe like if sc dot um, maybe button submit your snippets and then if they click that button I want to upsert my snippets I'm going to pass the session variable and then I'm going to pass my snippets and I'll show you one more thing here is that it also automatically inputs the most recent Monday which is never going to change and for the username. Uh, with SC ex experimental user, or depending on your version, maybe SC user, you can get the email of the user that is using your Streamlit app. So I don't have to take anything from the user except for what their snippets are for that week. So I go back and let's go ahead and change it. And I'll say, let's see my, my snippets. So last, let's see, last week, let's see if I can type well here. Last week I was preparing for my summit demo. And this week, you know, if I could type, that'd be really helpful. Giving my summit demo. All right, so I'm going to stop writing this out. And I'm going to press submit my snippets. Great. And then what if I write something here? Submitted your snippets. Great. Now I want to be able to prove to myself that it actually gets written into this database. So I can write. Session.sql, and you know, I kind of forget what table I put it in. All right, I put it in streamlet test.snippets data, then weekly snippets. Great, awesome. So I can go here and say select star from streamlet test.snippets data.weekly snippets. Maybe put it into a pandas data frame. Maybe I'll write it. Out, so I'll say like my data frame equals this. Maybe I'll write it out. So one of the big points of this is that uh, okay. So this actually th that works fine. So this uh, the reason why all this is so easy is because Streamlit is now inside of your Snowflake account. I don't have to do all this weird configuration. I can just write and interact with my data with inserts and merges and selects relatively easily. Now, this is fine, but I actually only want to see the data for this week. So I have this function that is the get the most recent Monday. So if I just like sc write get most, oh, that's the wrong one. Get most recent Monday. Then it's going to print out today because it's most recent Monday. So maybe I'll instead select star from my table where, what is it, week start date? Start date is equal to and get most recent Monday. Perfect. See if that works fine. Hmm, what did I do wrong here? Ah. Forgot to put those at the end. So perfect. So now I have the snippets from me, which are inserted into my table through my streamlet app. And also Tyler Simons, one of my coworkers, inputted his from today already. So did Zachary, and so did Maggie. Uh, they didn't actually do this, <laughs> but, but this is a you know fake data here. This is not actually what they're working on. Um, but uh, so why don't I try and make this a little bit nicer? Instead of just uh, if I'm actually showing a user, I don't just want to like throw out a giant table. Um, instead, maybe I'll do something like uh, rows. I'll loop through this data frame. It arose, and maybe I'll put them all inside like an expander. So I'll say rows, username, and then maybe I'll do like a markdown for each person's actual text. Snippets, text. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, great. So now I have an expander for each person, and then if I go and switch uh, this around, I can say like, Making, oh, that's all caps, not what I need. Making some awesome graphs. I can submit my snippets, it inserts it into the table, and then 
it automatically changes in here as well. So whenever I could pass this link to, to Tyler and Maggie and, and, and the other folks, and then they would be able to just insert uh, for their own individual user. Um, as you can see, this is not uh, a crazy, amazing coding. Uh, uh, like, th this is not hard. Uh, this, is, this is quite easy stuff to actually do. I'm not like a magician up here. So um, this kind of brings me to the, the first big lesson, which is don't convert pixel by pixel. So if I went um, and I was, I was thinking about the, the entire experience of making a Snippets app, and I just said, oh, well, I'm going to try and recreate an email client and recreate the idea of replying all, you guys would say, that's stupid. That's a really bad idea. Why don't you just like, create it from kind of like first principles for what makes sense and why you want to actually use this application? And it's kind of a silly example in this case. But in a lot of other cases, like when people are migrating stuff from, from other tools like um, like, like Tableau or Sigma or um, Power BI, or they're moving stuff you know, between each one, they try and replicate those other tools inside of Streamlit. And that generally does not work very well. It's, it's almost always better to think about what are people going to do with my data? Why are they going to do this? And then start from, uh, from that principle rather than trying to do some sort of replication. I, I most often see this from people that, oh, I've created my own bespoke application, or my IT application, my IT team has created their own bespoke application now. Now I'm trying to recreate it. So um, that's kind of a, uh, a huge lesson. Genuinely, it's probably four times more important than the other two. Um, so it's, it's huge. Uh, so I would, I would strongly recommend that you take that advice. Otherwise, I'm going to talk to you in like two months, and you're going to say, my, my stream live doesn't look amazing. Why doesn't it? So that's, that's my, my strongest bit of advice. The, the next thing that you might notice is, uh, well, sometimes this SQL statement, if I'm trying to uh, oh, oh, actually, no, there's, there's, there's one more thing here. So well, one, additional, um, one additional thing that I can do inside of Streamlit is, because it's not inside an email client anymore, I can do some analytics on top of, uh, on, on top of um, the work that on top of basically the snippets. So uh, one thing that I want to do is I want to see how many people have submitted snippets over time. So I can do something like my grouped data frame equals, and then I can kind of copy and paste this over here. But instead of filtering for the Monday, I can just say I'm going to group by everything. And I'm going to get, um, let's see, the week start date and the count as num snippets. And then I'll write this. I'll go ahead and write this out. Oh, I think I may have missed a parentheses here. Yeah, OK, great. So now let's write this out. My grouped data frame. All right, so I can do this, and I can see this, or I can just make a little line chart. So I can do ST line chart on my group data frame. And in this case, the X is going to be week start date. And then the Y, the y is going to be the number of snippets. OK, so now it's going to show me a line chart which is just four every single week, because this is, again, fake data. Um, but this kind of leads me to my, my, next, my next lesson, which is sometimes these SQL statements can get uh, can, can be a little bit compute intensive. And so whenever you're trying to, uh, I have customers all the time that come to me and they say, I want to make my Streamlit app faster. How do I do that? And 99% of the time, it's, oh, you should take some compute that exists within your Streamlit app and move it to something like a, a, a dynamic table or you know, some regular scheduled job, like you, know, you have a DBT job that works really well and then puts it into another table and then pull from that. Um, and that will make your Streamlit app so much, much faster than doing some, some really intense uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, data science work to make it faster. So I actually made a dynamic table that I'm just calling weekly snippets summary. Um, and yeah, that's the only code for the, for the dynamic table. They're really easy to use. Um, and then I can just select from that dynamic table. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's make this come over here. I can select from this dynamic table, and then now all of a sudden I know that my data, it's, it's now pulling from the dynamic table instead of the other thing that I was working with. And um, so the raw SQL statement, and it pulls out all that compute out. So if I have everyone inside of Snowflake that, is, that are making these apps, maybe that SQL statement would start to take you know, a second or a second and a half, which would be kind of annoying for people that are using this app. Um, and then you can imagine if you're working with really big data sets, then this, the Streamlit app can get slower and slower. And so I always tell people, when, you have, when you're dealing with these large data sets, make sure to take as much as you possibly can out. Um, 
one other thing that, that I wanted to be able to do now that I'm sitting inside of Streamlit and Snowflake is I can use all of the, the nice Cortex functions um, that, that Snowflake offers extremely easily inside of, uh, of Streamlit and Snowflake because, again, it's sitting inside your Snowflake account. So I made this, um, I made this function that I just called uh, git collab. And this, this git collaboration function um, is just a tiny uh, uh, Snowflake dot, uh, maybe Cortex complete function that uses Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And it's a very, I'm no prompt engineer. The only thing that it says is, you're about to get a data frame that looks like this. Please tell me who should talk to each other. Um, and, I, uh, and so I'm just going to pass it the entire data frame. It's going to read through it. And it's going to say, oh, well, based on what people are working on this week, maybe these two people should talk to each other. So maybe I'll, do, I'll wrap it in another button. So I'll say, like, if sc.button uh, git collab ops. Then I'll have my little git collab function. And then I'll pass in my data frame, which, what did I call it? My DF. And it returns the collaboration function. So I'll say maybe collab ops equals this. And then I will write it out. All right, let's try this out and see how this works. So now I click this Git Collaboration Opportunities button. It goes to Cortex. It passes all that stuff in. And it says that uh, I should work with Tyler Simons on creating dynamic visualizations for my summit demo. It's a little late for that. Uh, Zachary and Tyler should work on some ML components. It's basically able to read all of, all of these snippets and see what people should work on. This is not really useful. If there's four people, I can just read them all. But if there's 30, it all of a sudden becomes extremely useful. Um, it, it all of a sudden becomes extremely useful. And there's no real extra coding that happens here. I just do a tiny little prompt, use Cortex, and then kind of forget the rest of it. So those are, uh, those are my three, three big tips, um, which are do not convert pixel by pixel. An ounce of data engineering is worth, an ounce, is worth a pound of data science. And while you're creating your apps, think about the stuff that is, that is uh, significantly easier for you to do because you have AI built in. Um, the last one is the, the code with AI is both on the production and the consumption part because I didn't write a line of code for this demo. I did 100% of it via AI. AI is so good at writing Streamlit apps because it's an open source Python library. It's automatically going to be, um, if you use if you use Snowflake Cortex to build um, your Streamlit apps, it's going to work great. If you use ChatGPT, it's going to work great. If you use Perplexity, it's going to work great. They all work really well with Streamlit, and so I would strongly encourage you to give it a shot.